I'm going to start off tonight reading to you a letter from my younger son. I have two sons by different marriages. The elder one, an alcoholic, now sober, has become a Christian within the last six weeks. The younger one is an Episcopal clergyman. This is from the Episcopal clergyman. It starts off, Dear Gert, because we have long ago ceased to be mother and son and have become joint heirs in Christ. The letter says, Dear Gert, may the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be always acceptable to him who is our Lord and Savior. I say this to you as you go forth on another blessed opportunity to speak in his name. May you be open to the yearnings for others, for him. May you be patient with the hardness of heart which may well confront you. May you accept with humility any praise which might come your way, but which is acceptable only if redirected to him. May you never cease to thank God the Father for all those who love you, for without their love <coughs> and their encouragement and their trust, you would never have known the full dimension of grace which you have known and which in faith you may know always. May you emerge from whatever anxiety might prevent you from ministering in spirit as well as in word. May you finally accept his acceptance of you, that you may be free to accept all others long before you are even aware that there may be aspects about them which perhaps seem unacceptable. I say all of these things to you as to any child of God who has been summoned to speak the truth in love but who is called above all to embody that love long before she is asked to know what truth itself is. Go in grace, my mother. When you think this was written by a young priest to his formerly drunken mother, you can just see what God can do. He can use any old leftover thing that it is never too late and that nobody is impossible. This does not show, certainly, this letter, how fine I've become. It doesn't even say how fine my son is. It tells you how great God is. Now, because I am an alcoholic, because I am a Christian, I feel a very deep responsibility toward telling the world, the non-alcoholic, as well as the alcoholic who do, does not know that he is one, just what it is to be an alcoholic. This is one of the, strange to say, least known about illnesses, and yet the most prevalent. Because I myself am an alcoholic, and because in the last 17 and a half years I have become a Christian, I feel this very deep sense of what our Lord said, that if we are Christians, if we are his followers, we are our brother's keepers. Now, if you are not a Christian, you have every reason on earth to be concerned with what I have to say because if you do not care about people because they are your brothers and sisters, you had better care about alcoholism because of the pressure on your tax money. So I am a Christian alcoholic. I am an alcoholic Christian. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Don't be a square. Don't ever say an ex-alcoholic. There is no such thing. You can say an arrested alcoholic, a dry alcoholic, a recovered alcoholic. But you cannot say an ex-alcoholic any more than you can say an ex-diabetic. Because I am a Christian and because I am an alcoholic, I have the authority to speak on this subject. And if there is a title, it is Christian responsibility in alcoholism. 
I want to define both, what it is to be a Christian in a perfectly perfunctory short fashion, an oversimplification, of course. To be a Christian is to try to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to try to put into practice in our own lives that little which we understand of his significance to mankind and of the program which he outlined for those of us who would come to know him. He was speaking distinctly to his own disciples, the eleven, but he was also speaking to you and me, his later disciples. To be an alcoholic is to be a compulsive drinker, an obsessive drinker. To be an alcoholic is to be allergic to alcohol. You need have no knowledge that you are allergic to alcohol and still be an alcoholic. To be an alcoholic has nothing remotely to do with how much alcohol you drink, not the quantity, nor how often you drink. A person can be a little bit drunk every night of his life and not be an alcoholic. You could be like myself, I have not had a drink for be 18 years this coming July, and I am an alcoholic. I am allergic to alcohol. This itself is almost universally misunderstood. They say, that man's an alcoholic. I say, how do you know? They say, well, he drinks all the time. He drinks every day. And I say, but that does not make him an alcoholic at all. <laughs> 